This might be the most controversial video I have ever done. This is really important, I think. There is a lot of misinformation out there. When I started researching sugar gliders to decide if they were right for me, the first things that pop up when you research sugar gliders are not accurate, unfortunately. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to open up my laptop. I'm going to Google sugar gliders. Some information will be good and some will not. And I want to just have you guys follow along with that. And then we'll talk about the information that's not good. When I first started researching, I spent quite a bit of money, quite a bit of time wasted on sites and on resources that are not accurate. Thankfully, I found the right information before anything seriously bad happened, but I did end up wasting money, putting my sugar glider's safety and health at risk, and I just don't want that to happen to people. I don't want that to for anybody else. So let's see if this can maybe help somebody. One of my main reasons why I'm doing this channel in the first place is to put out good information for people who are looking into getting sugar gliders, who have them, who are new into sugar gliders, and who've had them for years. I think that where you can always be learning and there's always things that uh, we can improve upon. And I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing my own experiences. But over the years, I have done a lot of research so I know in general what is true and what's not now. But I didn't when I first got started. So let's get started. I just wanna say again, I don't really enjoy doing this part. Like this isn't really very fun for me. I feel like it's kind of negative and I don't know. It just doesn't give me the good feels to talk negatively about anybody or any business. But I don't know, I just feel like it's necessary and I feel like it's important. I have a lot of people that are watching that are trusting me to give them good information and I feel like this is a huge caution that I want to put out there for people. When I first started Google searching and I came across some of the information that I came across, I had some huge misconceptions about what sugar glider ownership was like. Thankfully, by the time I actually bought them, I had cleared all that up in my mind. But when I very first started researching, I thought that you could let them run loose in the house with a diaper and they would be fine. I thought that uh, they didn't bite or they were just like super, super sweet. They never had any problems with their owners. I thought you could just feed them like pellets and fruit. I didn't realize how restrictive some of the items that needed to be in their cage were. I thought that there was a lot more things that were safe that turns out that they are not safe. So I know that I can't be the only one and that's why I'm doing this because I just want to help somebody else and hopefully uh, you guys won't see me as somebody that's being negative but just somebody that's trying to be helpful. That's all I'm hoping for. Ow. Oh. Screensaver cutest screensaver ever. Makes me happy every time I look at it. Okay, so I'm going to open up a new window. And I'm just going to Google um, sugar gliders. Oh, goody. Sure Glider products, exotic nutrition. First thing. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the first thing that pops up, because it's an ad, is exotic nutrition. So let's just click on that, shall we? So I could spend all day going over all of the different things that are wrong on exotic nutrition. I'm really just trying to skim the surface, pick out a couple of things that I know for sure are not safe. I am absolutely not thoroughly covering everything on their site that's not safe. So please don't misunderstand me by thinking that if I didn't mention it, that it's safe. My goal is to point out to you things that I know for sure are not safe. You can assume that there's a lot more that I'm not pointing out. It would take forever for me to thoroughly research everything, thoroughly vet everything, 
and list off every single thing that is or is not safe. So I guess I'm just trying to paint an overall picture that you really need to exercise a huge amount of caution if you're going to buy something off of Exotic Nutrition. There's quite a few things that you don't have to buy off of Exotic Nutrition. If I don't have to, I don't buy off of there just because I don't want to support that business. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to like judge you if you buy safe stuff off of, off of there. I'm not going to judge you if you buy unsafe stuff off of there. Honestly, that's your business. I'm just trying to put the information out there and you can do with it whatever you want. So I'm just skimming the surface. I'm not thoroughly going through talking about every single thing that is or is not safe. Now, I will say Exotic Nutrition makes really, really good cages. That's pretty much the only thing that I would recommend purchasing from Exotic Nutrition. They make really, really great cages. So I will say that. So let's click on Sugar Glider Toys. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh gosh. Oh, uh, okay. Let's start with this one. Um, that is a rope toy. That is not safe. That's a bummer. I don't know about this toy, but I'm guessing that whatever this material is is probably not safe. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. But I know for sure this one is not safe. Now, what I have seen people do is take this toy and um, tie uh, anti-pill fleece all around it. And then as long as you just keep an eye on it and make sure that your anti-pill fleece is not sliding and it's, you know, it's nice and tight and the rope's not sticking out, I can see how that could still be a good toy. This looks like a kind of a cool little foraging cup toy. That might be fine. So I'm not going to spend too long on each thing, but that's my initial thoughts on that. Let's see this one. So this one also has rope, which is not safe. The sugar glider's nails can get caught in that, and that can be very dangerous. I know for sure that's not safe. I know for sure that's not safe. These little foraging things might be fine. I'm not sure about that plastic. If it's like a really stretchy plastic they could easily rip off and tear and eat that's definitely not safe but I don't know about that that could be I don't know what this material is it's hard to tell online again rope is a no-no but it's advertised as safe for sugar gliders so yeah you're gonna see a lot of that basically everything on here that it's great for birds they're gonna say is safe for sugar gliders and that's just not true so that's too bad nesting pouches oh boy so a lot of these are not safe i can guarantee you they have exposed seams i know this one for sure you know how i know that one for sure because i bought it and then after i bought it i realized it wasn't safe after i'd had it in their cage for a long time yeah uh this rope right here is not safe the material itself i think is fleece but there's exposed seams around the opening on the inside and seams on the inside that are exposed and that's not safe. So their little nails could have got caught in there and they could have had feet amputations or death. So thank you Exotic Nutrition for that. This is not safe. This with the rope is not safe. I'm pretty positive this has exposed seams also, which is not safe. I'm looking for a pouch that I know I got from them that I realized later is not safe. Mine that I found that I did not like was a bonding pouch. I'll show you that. So the bonding pouch that I got that turned out to not be safe, I've showed in other videos. Oh, they don't sell anymore. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, I wouldn't buy any pouches from Exotic Nutrition. Uh, exercise wheels. Okay, now, there's two different kinds of wheels that look really, really similar to this. One of them has a bar in the middle that, that's very dangerous because when gliders jump, they kind of, when they run, they kind of hop like this. They don't just run along the bottom. They kind of hop in this motion and they can hit their backs and they can get their tails caught on there. Here's a video. Let's see. Okay, I just want to see the inside. Hmm. 
It doesn't have the middle axle, but it also doesn't look like it's open. Here's the thing with that wheel. It does not look like it's unsafe. It looks like it has, doesn't have a middle bar. So at first glance, it looks like it might be safe. The problem that I have with it is that it doesn't have, it doesn't have openings on the track, you know, so it's a solid track. And that's kind of nasty because when gliders run, they poop and pee in the track. And um, yeah, so think about that. So they're running and then they're stepping on their own poop and pee because it doesn't have any place to fall out. I think that wheel would get really gross really, really fast. Let me show you my wheel. So I've showed this in other videos, but this is a custom cruiser wheel. See how it bounces like that? So it goes with the, the natural glide of a glider as they run. Oh, I think they'd be running the other way. Anyway, like this, that's how gliders run. They kind of hop. So it goes with that. And then it also has an opening, you know, openings in here. So then the poop and pee just kind of falls and gets filtered out. So I like that way better than the other one on Exotic Nutrition. When I went in there to show you the wheel, I just decided to grab this. This is the, the pouch that I got from Exotic Nutrition. This is anti-pill fleece, so that's safe. It has the little breathable, you know, great thing here, which is good. But let me turn it inside out. Okay, do you see all this exposed stitching? Yeah, not good. Fingernails can get caught in there. No bueno. Not good. The thing with exotic nutrition that bothers me the most is that it's advertised as safe. And it's such a huge company that when you're first getting started and you haven't really done your research yet, or you're starting to, you really have like good intentions. You're trying to do your research. It's exactly what I did. I was really trying to do my research. And when something's advertised as safe, I tend to be pretty trusting, or at least I used to be. And so even though I bought this and then later I learned, you know, don't um, have anything in their cage with exposed seams, I didn't even inspect it because I thought, well, I know it's safe. So in my mind, it was safe. Like it was advertised as safe, so it was safe, which is my bad, but ultimately I think exotic nutrition's bad. I'm gonna move on from exotic nutrition. I'm gonna go back. Uh, one other thing that I did when I was first researching sugar gliders, unfortunately, is I looked at the images. <laughs> because the thing that drew me to sugar gliders is they were so cute, of course. So let's look at the images and see if there's anything misleading there. Oh, goody, a bunch of other exotic nutrition stuff. Oh. So this is a super small cage, which obviously that makes me think that that would be okay. A good size for a cage maybe if I was just looking at most popular things. This is not made out of safe material. I'm sure it has exposed seams. Uh, please don't ever put a leash on your sugar glider. It's very dangerous for them. Okay, so very cute, very cute. Yeah, mm-hmm. Cute, cute, cute. Little fleece pom-pom. Those are safe. Those are fun. Oh, ouchie. Okay, nothing horribly bad except for those bars at the very top one thing that i did see when i was i remember specifically seeing and commenting to my husband which just shows how uninformed i was was that i remember seeing a sugar glider in a diaper and because i didn't know anything about sugar gliders i thought oh how fun so you can put them in a diaper and then let them run around your house yeah this, pretty much that picture is what I saw. Um, please don't put your sugar gliders in a diaper. I can't imagine putting my sugar gliders in a diaper. They would rip it off faster than anything else if I even got it on. It's just so misleading to, to make it look like it's okay to have your gliders in a diaper. Um, and that that's like something that common, commonly is done. So anyway, okay, I'm going to go back to just the regular... Google search a videos, cute sugar gliders. Ooh, let's see what this one is. Cause this is YouTube, right? So this is what I'm trying to get more 
more information out there on YouTube. They're called sugar gliders because of their preference for nectarous foods. They basically just eat fruit and insects. Ah! Oh no! Okay, I'm gonna rewind that. See if you see a problem with that. Nectarous foods. They basically just eat fruit and insects. Ah! I'm feeding them. So this is the most popular sugar glider video on YouTube. And she just said they basically eat just fruit and insects. And every sugar glider owner should know that that's incorrect. But a lot of people don't because there's just a lot of misinformation out there. Let's see what else she has to say. And peach yogurt. They hate all other flavors though, which is weird. It's very easy to take care of. Mm. Apples, Gatorade, and grain, and maybe some yogurt. They're okay, so she does say apples. Did she say Gatorade? Let me rewind that. Apples, Gatorade, and... I think she says apples, Gatorade, and maybe some yogurt. Apples, Gatorade, and... Yeah, and please yogurt. don't give your sugar glider so Gatorade. They can actually use them to wrap around things. During the day, I let them crawl around because they're normally really tame and sleepy. So they're not trying to experiment. Mm. So um, she doesn't say this specifically, but... If you're going to let your sugar gliders climb around during the day, obviously that needs to be supervised, like super supervised, because that almost implies that they're sleepy and they're not going to get anything, any problems during the day. I wish she had said specifically that they need to be supervised because that could be really dangerous. So, yeah. They love this wheel which is extremely loud because they're awake all night it's a little difficult taking care of them in a studio apartment and then occasionally at night they'll bark if they want um i'm pretty sure that's wheel's not safe i don't mm. anyway this might have one of those center axles on there i'm pretty positive it does so and it doesn't have the openness like we talked about before i don't think i could be wrong want your my dogs, they're fascinated by them. I have an Italian Greyhound, who my little Chihuahua really likes them too. She would just sniff at them if you have them in your hands when you're feeding them. I think they're about done with us for today. Okay. Um, my concern with that is that there needs to be an abundance of caution when you're having sugar gliders exposed to other animals. And she doesn't say that. It makes it sound like... They might just get along totally fine with other animals with no danger. So that's concerning to me. Okay, so I'm going to move on <clears throat> from that. You know what I'm really encouraged by, though, is that the Pet Glider is the second, you know, website that pops up, which obviously this is an ad, which means they paid for this space, I believe. But that's encouraging to me because that's going to have good information on it. All right, guys, I think I'm going to stop for today. I think that was a good little, you know, if you, you're a first initial Google search. Obviously, there's lots of questions that somebody might Google. You know, do sugar gliders stink? Are they easy to take care of? You know, more specific things. But just when you Google sugar glider, uh, just so you know, that's the things that pop up. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you will consider subscribing, not just for you to get notified, but the more subscribers that I can get, the more YouTube will put this page up on the, you know, the listings so that when people do search on YouTube or Google sugar gliders, hopefully the good information can rise to the surface. So that's just the way the YouTube algorithm works. The more popular a site, obviously, the higher chance that somebody's going to stumble upon it when researching. So if you would be so kind as to subscribe, that would be wonderful, and I hope you have a wonderful day.